The only difference between an expected blessing and an unexpected blessing is the individual's level of expectation. So I think before we do anything, before we move forward, before we go any further in this service, we ought to get our expectation together. she that cometh to God must believe that first he is. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if I were you, I wouldn't waste this moment. I wouldn't waste this opportunity. I wouldn't come in here today and aim too low. Because if you serve the God of exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can ask for a thing, then that means today might very well be your day. I'm not speaking The usher, the anybody serving, but because where the Spirit of the Lord is, yes. there is liberty. So I just affirm today, I'm not leaving how I came. I, I wouldn't get up this morning and get dressed and come out here and leave the same way I came. Matter of fact, I lift my hands in this moment and put what I need from the Lord on my mind and say, Lord, whatever you're doing today, however you want to bless, however you want to move, however you want to heal, however you want to work. Just do it in my life. Whatever you're doing in this season, God, don't do it without me. I still believe that you can heal. I still believe you can deliver. I still believe that you can set free. Even if I hadn't seen it this year, even if I hadn't seen it last year, if I hadn't seen it last week, I still believe that you're able. I still believe that it can happen. Matter of fact, I believe that it's going to happen right now. I believe it's going to happen before I leave here today. Before I get in my car, I still believe it. So God, my prayer today is whatever my brothers and sisters need today, that you work in their lives. God, I pray that their expectation rises to your level of ability. That they're open to receive from you. God, don't just bless us individually, but bless us collectively. I want my neighbor to be blessed on my right and my left. Yes. I didn't come in selfish. If my neighbor came in down, I want them to leave lifted. They came in broken, I want them to leave fixed, God. If they came in sick, heal them today, God. Whatever my neighbor needs, do a work. In my neighbor's life, God, I affirm that it's already better because they sat by me today. That their life has changed because they sit on my rope. Because I brought enough faith on the inside of me to change everything in my section. So God, stand up in your preacher. Help me to preach with your power and I'll give you your praise. It's been my prayer now for seven years. It continues today. Consecrate me now. Service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Lord, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. Yeah. My will be lost in mine. It is in the bachelor's majestic, marvelous name of Jesus. I pray you give thanks. Yeah. Amen. On your way to your seat, tell somebody God's got something for you today. Amen. Amen. God's got something for you today. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Anybody glad and rejoice in it? Amen. Amen. We give God praise for this day. We give God praise for God's spirit that rests, rules, and abides with each of us. We give God praise for our bishop. Can we celebrate Bishop Buck? All right, I say he's our bishop. Can we celebrate our sister?
that's still a sore subject with him, but we're going to leave that right on alone. I mean, he got it at the end of the day, so we should be all right. We give God praise for the officers and members, friends of this church. We give God praise for this wonderful singing aggregation that has blessed us. These wonderful musicians, ushers, media team, everyone who serves these dances, everybody. La di da di everybody. That means you. I'm just happy to be home one more time. Amen. Anybody need a word from the Lord? Yeah. All right, let's see. Can we get one? Book of Exodus, chapter 14. Book of Exodus, chapter 14. The old familiar text. Let's see. Can we get some fresh water from that old familiar well? Exodus chapter 14. Just two verses of focus for today. Two verses of scripture. Shouldn't take you long to get to Exodus. It's the second book of the Bible. Exodus chapter 14. You've gone to Leviticus, you've gone too far. Hang the left. Exodus chapter 14. Two verses of scripture, verse 21 and 22. I'll be reading out of the end. I'll be reading whatever translation that you have. Reads this way. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind. And turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. The Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. The wall of water on the right and on their left. Verse 21, one more time. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind. Turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. Just for a little while, was God shall guide and hopefully you should help I just want to preach from the subject, divine disruptions. Divine disruptions. <coughs> <may have different>. <coughs> <coughs> My brothers and sisters, it's amazing to me how no matter how many times we hear them, that there are just some stories that never get old. Believers, we enter this sacred space week in and week out to have our spirits fed. Not by motivational speeches or self-help coaching or TED Talks from influential people, but rather from insight from a grand old book filled with the stories of how a gracious God has dealt with an undeserving people in the face of insurmountable odds to bring about unimaginable deliverance. And though over centuries, kingdoms have both come and gone, nations, have both risen and fallen. Leaders have both woken and now sleep, and our world changes rapidly with each passing day. These life-giving stories continue to breathe in the hearts and minds of the people who are open to receive both the power and potency of their experiences. Because let's face it, there are just some stories that I don't care how many times you hear them, they will never get old. You'll never get tired of hearing how a favorite son, hated by his brothers, lost his special coat and route to a pit that eventually leads to a prison that finally leads to a palace that brings him before those same brothers who put him in that pit. That is such a full circle experience that it births the words, you meant it for evil, but the Lord meant it for good. I don't care how many times you hear it, you'll never get tired of hearing how three young men held fast to their convictions defied a king and were brought face to face with a fiery furnace that burned at capacity yet still proved insufficient to consume them because somebody who wasn't put in the fire stepped into the fire and took the heat out of the fire which led a bewildered king to utter the words did not be put in three well I see a fourth one and he looks like the son of God I don't care how many times you hear it You'll never get tired of hearing how a woman with a blood issue who had exhausted a lot of options found out about one more option and fought her way to that option. And when it looked like she'd gone as far as she could go, faith took one more step. And the touch of a hymn changed her life and let a savior to raise the relevant question. 
who touched me and declared to her that because of that touch, your faith has made you whole. And I don't care if you hear it every day for the rest of your life. As a believer, you will never get tired of hearing that when humanity lost its way and sin won a day, fracturing the relationship between creator and creation, God sent his only begotten son. Y'all read the Bible in here? Through 40 and two burning generations, covered him in flesh, put him in the womb of a virgin, birthed him into the earth to die for that same humanity, who then put him on a cross, laid him in a grave, put him in a tomb, and he laid there all night Friday night. And he laid there all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands defeating death, hell, and the grave, redeeming that same humanity and reconciling them back to God. And it's not because they sound good and are entertaining, but it's because we believe that the hope of these stories have an uncanny way of producing power in our lives. We still believe that the grass withereth and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. We still believe that heaven and earth will pass away before one word of God fails. And yes, we still believe that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's why we came today. That's why we pressed our way after the week we've had. That's why we fought the devil all week long, then fought ourselves to get out of bed, then fought traffic to get to this building, then fought the parking lot to get to the door. Not because we didn't have anything else to do. Not because we had some free time on a Sunday. Not because it was a good suggestion. But because after everything we faced last week, after all we've seen last month, after all the storms of last year, we need the God of those stories who put some power in the stories to change our very lives. And we believe that the same God who did it for Joseph and who did it for the Hebrew boys and who did it for the woman with the issue of blood and yes, who raised Jesus from the dead is still able, I said he's still able, to change everything in our lives. As a matter of fact, I know I ain't got to my text yet, but I believe he's changing some things right now. That he's healing some bodies and paying some bills and opening some doors and clearing some paths and birthing some dreams and clearing some vision and meeting some needs and making some ways, not because of magic or mysticism or hoodoo or voodoo or you do, but because there's still power in the word of God. And there's still life in the story. And our text today is no different. But who here at some point had not shouted at this juncture of Israel's story? They've been out of fellowship with God for about 400 years. In bondage and oppressed. And now God has shown up and delivered his people in a great and mighty way. He's pulled out all the stops, y'all. Spared no creative expense. He's gone to great lengths just to show them how amazing he truly is. I mean, he's turned Egypt's water into blood. Sent frogs, mice, flies, and locusts to ravage the land. Inflicted their livestock with disease and afflicted their citizens with boils. He's rained from heaven, damaging hail. Turned off the lights for three days. And killed the firstborn son of each Egyptian family. I mean, if he was trying to make a first impression, he's really going above and beyond. And then, as if it couldn't get any more mind blowing, now, in chapter 14, for the grand finale, he instructs Moses to stretch out his rod. And he opens up a highway in the Red Sea. And the children of Israel cross over on dry land. Then he closes it again, and he drowns Pharaoh's entire army. And that's where it gets good for you and me. Not so much because of Israel's experience, not to say it's not remarkable, but rather because this is a story of deliverance that we all can take part in. This is where we add our feeble voices to the resounding chorus of their testimony. And not because you've ever seen the physical sea open and waters part, but because at some point in your life, you've been faced with your own red sea of trials and tribulations. Where you couldn't see your way and the enemy was hot on your trail. But some kind of way that you still can't explain it. God parted the waters of your situation and you walked through waters that should have taken you out. And before you knew it, you crossed over to the other side. And if I were you, I'd try really hard. I'd try really hard not to think about it. I mean, your neighbor probably couldn't handle you having a flashback of how dark it got and how bad it got and how bleak it got and how you almost gave up and you couldn't see your way. 
the next thing you knew, waters were separating, and God was working that thing out before your very eyes. Yeah, if I were you, I would leave that thing alone. You might tear up your whole road, thinking about how much he loved you, and how far he brought you, and how long he kept you, and how deep he reached for you, and how high he raised you, and how you made it here today, because he's been that good. Matter of fact, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me, I can give God praise, because he's a deliverer. And I'm just here today because he delivered me. Should have gotten stuck in it, should have died in it, should have been lost to it, but he beat back hell one more time. He defeated the enemy one more time. He rebuked the devourer one more time. He kept my mind one more time. He protected my spirit one more time. He saved the day one more time. He cleared the hell one more time. That's why I lose my mind. That's why I scream and holler. That's why I shout in your face. Because the God I serve keeps on delivering me. Is there anybody here who can give God praise because he's a deliverer? I said he's a deliverer. I said he's a deliverer. He delivered me last year. He delivered me last month. He delivered me last week. He delivered me last night. He delivered me this morning. When I go home tonight, I'll still be delivered because the God I serve is a deliverer. Old church said I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply, staying within, seeking to rise no more. I'm coming up on a conjunction. But the master, I really can stop right there. That really settles it. That settles the matter. That closes the case. But the master, I should have been dead. But the master, I should have lost my mind. But the master, I should have lost my peace. But the master, I should have lost my joy. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters lifted me, I sing and I give God praise. Because he's a beloved. He, he's a deliverer. He delivered me. And beloved, I love the rest of this time shouting about Israel's story. But there's another character that I found in the text that has a story we never tell. Yeah, there's a glaring figure in this text that gets lost in this account and we never quite deal with it because I've been hearing this story all of my life. And I found out that we love to talk about God. We love to talk about Moses. We love to talk about the children of Israel. We even love to talk about the rock. But I've come to discover that we never talk about the water. Okay. We, 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 we never talk about the water. And y'all, something strange happened to me as I was cruising this text. Some weeks ago in my devotional time, and I know y'all won't believe it because y'all too deep and wonderful. But the Red Sea started talking to me. Yeah, I know you won't believe that. Yeah, it did. Super deep, you super spiritual. But the Red Sea started talking to me. And the word said, Curtis, don't get so caught up in their story that you miss my story. Because my story looks nothing like their story. And I said, okay, water, well, tell me a story. And y'all, the water told me this story that blew my mind so much that I had to come all the way to Fort Lauderdale to tell you today. Can I tell you what the story is? This is what he said, bro. He said, I was minding my own business. I was in the place God put me. I was doing what I was created to do. <coughs> I wasn't doing nothing wrong. I wasn't bothering nobody. And out of nowhere, my flow was disrupted. <laughs> there was no warning. There was no storm that was brewing. There was no calamity on the horizon. I just looked up and one minute I was flying. 
moment. And the next minute I was disrupted. And to make matters worse, it wasn't the devil. It wasn't the enemy. It wasn't anybody who you would think that should be against me. But my truth this morning is that it was God who disrupted my flow. And I know I'm telling the war the story this morning. But God, I've got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that if I pulled the audience today, there's someone here who's in the middle of a disrupted flow. You were flowing fine one minute and the next minute and then the doctor's report was disrupted your flow. You were flowing on your job and the next minute the layoff was disrupting your flow. Things were flowing fire in your family and then the destruction of death, divorce, dissension, disrupted your flow. You love God, but your flow has been disrupted. Come to church as many Sundays as you can, but some way your flow still got disrupted. You go to work every day, you try to keep, treat people right, but out of nowhere, here comes the disruption. Because the truth of the matter is, no matter how good you live, and how well you treat people, how much right you try to do, life has a way of hitting you with a disruption. And I don't know who you are, I don't know what you're going through. But my assignment today is to let you know that the disruption that has hit your life in this season is not of the enemy, but rather it is a divine disruption. I need you to hear me today. You are in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. God is just working through this disruption to get some glory out of your life. I need you to grab that today. As a matter of fact, I'll go as far as saying the disruption that you are facing right now is the very indicator that you're right where God wants you to be. Amen. Hear me today. The word of the Lord to you today is don't despise the disruption because God is going to use this disruption to make you your best you. And if you hang in there, God is going to produce something in you that's going to change the very nature of who you are. And you, like the water, might have some inconsistencies, some problems, some, some things, some concerns about why you're being disrupted in this season. I'm going to raise a couple of them. We're going to raise them out here. I saw about seven days. I'm only going to live two. Then we're going to raise them out here. The first reason that your flow might be disrupted it's because God wants to increase your capacity. He wants to increase your capacity. Yeah. Now, the very reason that you may be experiencing the divine destruction in this season is to show you that you have the potential to do things that you never would have known you could have done had you not been disrupted. I'm still in the text. I'm still right here in the text. Why she's been the says, the waters were divided. When God divides the waters, he doesn't just separate the waters. He creates a wall of water on opposite sides of a path. Now a sea is designed to do a lot of things. A sea is designed to flow. It's designed to make waves. It's designed to hold marine life. It's even designed to produce salt. What it's not designed to do is stand upright. Okay, sir. Making me work today. But when God parts the sea, water goes from flowing horizontally to standing vertically. Meaning what was once laying down is now standing up. Which suggests that God uses the disruption to increase the sea's capacity. Listen, if there's no disruption crystal, then the sea never knows that it is capable of standing when the disruption comes. But now that it has the experience of the disruption, it now knows that not only can it survive the disruption, but when the disruption comes, 
destruction that's taking place in your life right now is not designed to take you out. It's designed to stand you up. And not just stand you up, but grow you up. Yeah, this hell that you're catching right now is not just going to increase your capacity, but it's going to increase your maturity. See, the disruption has a way of letting you know that you're stronger than you think. Yeah, you ain't know how tough you were until trouble hit your life. Because the flow shows you who you are, but the disruption shows you what you're made of. The flow lifts you out of your seat, but the disruption drives you to your knees. The flow shows you what God can do, but the disruption brings you face to face with who God is. The flow produced your praise, but the disruption birthed your worship. Because the truth of the matter is, if you can stand through it, then you can thrive after it. That if you can survive doing it, then you can win after it. Because if this is the worst that it gets, then the best must be coming right after this. And I might not look like much, but just wait until I make it through this disruption. Wait until I pass this test. Because I'm going to be better after this. Because the God I serve still has a plan for my life. That's somebody's testimony today. Just wait till I come out of this. Wait till I come through this disruption. I'm going to be better than I ever was before. But in the meantime, I'm going to give God praise because I'm still standing. And I know I ain't promised you a house, a car, money, honey, blessings, increase, or overflow. But is there anybody here who can give God praise? Yes. That when the dust settles, you are still standing. As a matter of fact, not only were you still standing, but still trusting, still hoping, still believing, still giving, still blessed. Still healed, still saved, still vibing, still smiling, still shining, still progressing, still pressing, still got my joy, still got my peace, still got my mind, still got my life, because the God I serve is standing through me. Is there anybody here who can give God praise because you're still standing?
Yeah, I know that went way enough. You would understand this better, David, if you've ever seen the movie Ghost Dad. Ghost Dad was directed and produced by Sidney Poitier and stars Bill Cosby as Elliot Hopper, a single father with three children, who after a car accident where he falls from a bridge is now stuck between life and the afterlife. And though no one else can see him, he realizes that in dark places, his children can still see and hear him. This proves important because for a class presentation, his teenage son, Danny, decides to do a magic trick, which consists of him escaping out of the lockbox called the trunk of doom. To increase the difficulty of the trick, not only is the trunk locked, but he himself is locked in chains inside of the trunk. Unfortunately, in the process of the trick, he loses the key to the lock and is unable to escape. The class, who's been chuckling up until this point, now erupts in full blown laughter once young Danny is forced to ask the teacher for genderless assistance. But just as the laughter gets the loudest, the trunk emerges from the floor and begins to float in midair onto a nearby desk to add insult to injury, not only does the trunk open, but Danny with the confidence now in his face floats out of the trunk and is now hovering over the very thing that held him captive and is now free from the chains that were binding him inside the trunk. Both the class and the teacher look on in complete amazement. They are astonished, Lady G, because they can only see what they can see. But what they can't see is what Danny can see. And what Danny can see is that while he was stuck in the trunk, his daddy stepped in the room, loosed him from the chains, opened up the top, and brought him out of the trunk. And though they can only see Danny in the air, what they don't know is that the only reason that he's not floating on top of what had him back is because his daddy has stepped in the room and is holding him up. Good afternoon, my brother. May the Lord God bless you real good. But there are a few folk in the building who can help and close this message. Why don't you look at an angel? and say, neighbor, the only reason that I'm standing here today is because the God I serve is holding me up. That was the wrong neighbor. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, the only reason that I'm spilling my right mind is because my daddy is holding me up. Trust in God. I got a question 
them from going, it's more you keep them from going through more than they have to go through. Because you've already endured it for them. Because God's anointed you in this season to carry their deliverance. Yes. So what your prayer is, got to be, is Lord, show me who's tied to my disruption. See, this ain't an easy one. This is a mature one. Because you want me to tell you this, you coming out, you coming over, and everything's going to be all right, and you're going to get your miracle in seven days. Your breakthrough is coming after a while and you sow a $50 seed and everything's going to be all right. I can't tell you that. There's some things you just got to know for. I don't have no false promises for you. To, I'm sorry, I ain't that preacher. But it's some things you just got to go through. And listen, I apologize in advance because I can't even stand here today and authentically pray for your deliverance. I can't do it. I can't pray that your process ends any earlier than it needs to. Because if it ends too early, somebody's going to miss out on what they need. So I'm not even released. I'm not even released to pray for that. But what I am going to pray for is that the Lord gives you strength to endure. That he holds you up. That he keeps you in the process. I, I, that's all I'm trying to say is that if the storms don't cease, just in case the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Sing for me, baby. I want you to take this with you today. Keep on raging. Don't cease. 
Jesus. You stepped out on faith today, standing at this altar. Even my brothers and sisters who are going through their own disruptions and are standing at their seat, God, I, I pray that you stand with them. That you strengthen them. That you hold them up. That you keep them. That you bless them even in this moment. God, I don't know what the disruptions are. But God, you know. And God, we give you praise because you're God over every disruption. So God, whatever they need to go through, whatever you're trying to birth in them, whatever you're trying to perfect in them, whatever you're trying to manifest in their lives, God, I pray that you do a work in their lives. But he that began a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. And God, we decree, declare that after this disruption, they're going to be better than they ever were before. We decree that the doors will open and paths will clear and ways will be made after this disruption. God, we decree and declare that I
Christian who preaches the gospel with power, teaches a church family that loves and supports you, and wants to walk with you, go to discipleship. You ready to take your next step today? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Love to usher you to the greatest decision of your life. God wants to meet you in this moment. Some man, some woman, some boy, some girl. Salvation. Salvation. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, Mount Bethel, and welcome to the Bethel Connection. Let's go! 
The Lenten season is a 40-day period of reflection that commemorates the 40 days Jesus spent fasting in the desert. As we observe the season of Lent, we ask that you unite with us in 40 days of prayer. We encourage you to visit your favorite bookstore or online site and purchase the book Draw the Circle, a 40-day prayer challenge by Mark Batterson. This book provides inspiring messages and stories and will be used as a guide during our 40 days of prayer in observance of Lent. From now until Resurrection Sunday, join us in prayer at 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. Significant Scripture, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, and at 3.33 p.m. Significant Scripture, Jeremiah 33 and 3. Serving with passion, zeal, commitment, and excellence, all leaders are expected to attend our Servants Ignite Leadership Summit on March 21st, right here at the Mount. This is a mandatory meeting for all ministry leaders and assistant ministry leaders, all deacons and deaconesses, and all ministers. If you do not currently serve in ministry, however you want to be a part of this phenomenal and exciting training and recognition meeting, please feel free to join us. That's March 21st, right here at Mount Bethel. We're asking all ladies to please join us this Saturday at 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall for our monthly room meeting. Please bring a food item to share with the group. Beverages will be provided. Join us in celebration with the St. John Missionary Baptist Church family on March 12th as Bishop Glover declares the Word of God during the fourth pastoral anniversary of Reverend Dr. Javon T. Davis. The service will begin at 7.30 p.m. Transportation will be provided. Printed directions are also available on the front desk. The mortgage is free and clear. However, the work continues. Thank you for partnering with us every third Sunday of the month. Your $100 contribution over and above God's tithe will assist us with remaining debt free. You may place your contribution in the envelope using the spot allocated for campus improvements, or you may text to give your contribution using the keyword campus. Join us via our conference line for corporate prayer every Monday night at 7 p.m. And then to get over hump day, Please join us again every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. for Midweek Matter with Bishop Glover. The number to call is 605-313-5074 and enter PIN 135-861-PAN. Printed information is available on the front table.
if you can't make it, you can just stay right where you are. And, you can, and, and, and we'll, 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 we'll pray for you right back at your seat. Just don't, yeah, go back to your seat. Amen. I can see it right now. That's going to be a struggle. She's struggling with cancer. Amen. She asked us to pray for her today. And uh, I don't want her to leave here without us praying for her. Just turn this way and look at her and want you to just, just put your hands toward her. Amen, baby. Just put your hands. That's your, that's your sister. Cousin. Pray. All right. Just, just, just put your hands on her as a point of contact right now. In fact, I'm coming back then.
Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us. Now henceforth and forever, and all the people of God say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say it one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you tell somebody it's over? It's over. This, this disruption.